So you just pull a mud rock or you have her for a long time already and you don't know how to best use her. So let's talk about that in this video. Mudrock is one of the few operators that I will highly recommend anyone to build up to Elite 1. The reason for that is that a lot of the other 6 stars, it takes a lot of investment for you to see the true power that they have in order to unlock things like their skill tree. But for Mudrock, while she does have a powerful skill tree that I'll show later on, at Elite 1 using her skill 2, you're gonna see her provide a hell of a benefit into your account. So give me a little while and I'll plonk a mud rock. You can see that she has very high DP cost at 33 DP. So it is very important for you to pair mud rock with good vanguards so that you can deploy her into the battlefield. But once you've done that, you can see her killing a lot of the smaller mobs and even some of the medium sized ones very easily. Just to show you, I'm using an Elite 1 Mudrock that I borrowed from a friend. So she's got 687 attack, which is very good at handling all sorts of enemies up to about B defense. If you have an Elite 2, you could challenge certain A defense enemies, but I wouldn't advise it. And then also her defense is pretty high for the defender's side. This is 523, which is going to be very good at holding out quite a bit of physical damage enemies up to about B attack as well. Her branch is considered as Juggernaut, where she cannot be healed by other allies, so normal medics cannot heal her. But there are certain units that can bypass this, which I'll talk about later. The skill that we're looking at right now for Mudrock is her skill 2, where it reads that the next attack restores a certain amount of max HP, which 5% is already very high, and then she's also able to deal a large physical damage to all the surrounding enemies within her 8 tiles radius, and of course her own tile. She also has a percentage chance to stun the enemies, which is a very good utility to use in very tight situations. This is a defensive recovery skill, meaning every time she gets attacked, she will gain 1 SP. Just as you see here, the mortar gunner is striking her, and she's gaining SP every time she gets hit. Skill rank 7, it's SP of 5, and if you just do mastery 1, it's already gonna be 4 SP per skill use. So you can see because of high defense, she's not really feeling all that much pain from the mortar gunners, which is really where she shines. But of course, to something like casters, she's gonna struggle a little bit more since she only got 10 resistance. So notice that she's attacking a butcher, someone who has quite low defense but pretty high attack as well. But she's not feeling all that much pain, really showing to you how even at Elite 1, Mudrock is already very good. But if you have someone like a heavy defender leader, this guy that's coming straight down, because he's got the A defense, you can see that Mudrock struggles a lot more when it comes to killing him. In fact, I don't even think she's able to kill him all that much in time. I'm gonna turn on the detector so that Mudrock is able to swing and do the damage onto all the enemies around her as much as she can. But yeah, she's really struggling over here. The Heavy Defender leader has high attack. The castle is also dealing with her. Of course, if I added more operators here, it's probably gonna work. But with only two operators, I'm just showing you how much potential Mudrock can offer already at Elite 1. So here's another stage, stage 4-2, just to show you how Mudrock can tank everything on her own in a stage. So I brought along a Vanguard this time. As I've mentioned, a Vanguard is going to be Mudrock's best friend, so that you can generate the DP that you need in order to deploy your Mudrock. So now I've got enough DP, I'm going to place her facing upwards, and I'll retreat Korea, just to show you her soloing capabilities. Again, just an Elite 1 Mudrock, so skill rank 7, and you can see how she's dealing with an earlier stage that you might be struggling in. Now you notice this, this circular shield that keeps spawning for Mudrock. So what is it about? It's not part of her skill too, and in fact, it's actually her talent. So her talent reads that every 9 seconds, she gains 1 shield. So at Elite 1, she can have up to 2 stacks of shields, and at Elite 2, she'll have 3 stacks. So whenever a shield is broken, meaning it's being hit by an enemy, she's able to restore 20% of her max HP. So that's also explaining to you why she doesn't need any medic. Her ability to just self-heal by a huge amount is impressive. That's why she's considered one of the strongest 6 stars within the game. So you're really seeing her shine over here. She's just dealing with all the enemies coming into her. Don't need any other additional support. At Elite 2, you can see more of this soloing capability where you might just place her at the blue box alone and then she's just killing everything. So we move on to the big boy stuff where I finally get to bring an Elite 2 Mark Rock. But I want to first answer the question of is there any point in time that Marok skill 1 is going to be useful? My answer is for most scenarios, no. Unless you want to do something like what I show over here, where I'm using Mudrock Scale 1 to simply isolate the fight, and you can see Mudrock is just focusing on one Grudge Bearer alone. If let's say this is the case of what you want to do, where you don't want to cause a spin and wake up all the Grudge Bearers, I guess that is why you would use a Mudrock Scale 1, but in all other scenarios, it's so much better that you use Scale 2 and 3, because you can see that the damage output for Mudrock right now 
is so small and slow that she's taking forever to just kill one grudge bearer before she can move on to the others. So hence, it's not really the best use case for Mudrock, but if not, I shall show you skill 3. So let's plonk her down at where the grudge bearers are, except I'm not gonna let her attack them just yet. Then, let's take a look at her skill. So it says that upon skill activation, Mudrock stops attacking and doesn't take any damage for 10 seconds. She's able to reduce the movement speed of everyone around her, and at the end, she'll do a 5 second stun. She's gonna be attacking a lot faster, with a greatly increased attack, and she's gonna have better defense. This is what I'm gonna do. Let's turn on her skill, and I'm gonna use Phantom to wake up the, all the Grudge Bearers. You're gonna see them all pretty much walk towards Mud Rock, and then at the end of her skill, she's gonna be able to whack, you know, just keep smacking the heck out of them, and you can see how she's able to just kill two of the Grudge Bearers just on her own. Very easily like that. So then again, all of the rest are just filtering to Blaze, but don't worry, Blaze can handle them as well. So this is an example of how you can use Mud Rock to deal with some of the tougher enemies. So you can see how she doesn't like hurt all too badly for the Grudge Bearers. That's not just because of her third skill, but also because of her talent when it comes to E doing her. So her talent states that she takes 30% less damage from Sarkaz enemies. Other operators will struggle much worse if let's say they had four Grudge Bearers attacking onto them. But with Mud Rock's talent, you can see how she's able to bear with the pain and still be able to be tanking the damage over here. So this is the lovely stuff that you can learn from uh, this display of Mud Rock. So here's another instance of using Mud Rock skill too. But before that, let me teach you a bit of a concept called preemptive firing. So preemptive firing basically means turning on a skill before any enemy is even around the area. For certain operators, this happens quite often for people like Schwartz, Fartooth, and even Mud Rock. So on Mud Rock skill 3, if I place Mud Rock here, you might be telling me, hey Cookie, you should face Mudrock upwards. But instead, whenever you're using Mudrock skill 3, I highly advise that you use her skill with her facing backwards from the enemy's direction. So the reason for this is that, let's wait for a Lancer to appear. So notice we've got Lancers over here. Preemptive firing again means that you turn on the skill early before the enemy even arrives. So we just turn on Mudrock skill, and you can see that even as the Lancers approaches, at where I stop Mudrock, if any of the lenses were to go past Mudrock, Mudrock will still be able to hit them on the tile in front of her. So that's the reason why you don't want Mudrock to always face front the enemy, because what if an enemy just goes behind her? So I'm gonna do that again later on. Especially for enemies that are fast moving like a Lancer, it's this kind of positioning that I will highly advise. So I can't do preemptive firing now because the lenses are approaching a bit too close. But let's say for these two, right? So the, they've already gained so much speed. And then I'm just going to turn on Mudrock's skill. So at this point, if you do it just well, and of course if Ifrit and Aya doesn't kill the enemies a bit too fast, then you can of course see the use of placing Mudrock facing towards the back. Especially if you don't have a lot of strong operators, you should always learn this when using a skill tree. So also, if let's say you see any stage where there are Sarkaz enemies, always think of using a Mudrock because Mudrock is able to provide the help. Um, in that scenario. And of course, even though the Demolitionists have high attack, with Mudrock's shield, she's not going to feel too much pain. A final little cool thing to understand about Mudrock's skill 3 is her stun range. So if let's say I were to turn on her skill, notice that the range is actually a big diamond. So once it turns on, people within the lane above and below will also get stunned. So use this concept in scenarios where maybe there are multiple lanes and you can use Mudrock's utility to the fullest. I'm going to use this time to talk about the good friends of Mudrock, basically the operators that I highly suggest you to pair together with her. So one of the greatest examples would definitely be a blemish shine at E2 because she has a talent that reads that for all the allies with defensive recovery skill, they will also gain 1 SP when attacking an enemy, which is super good for Mudrock's skill too. Then, Skadi Alta is also another great example of who to pair with Mudrock, because she's able to heal Mudrock. So she's one of the only few operators that can do that, along with people like Sora, which you typically don't use, and um, Perfumer and Angelina as well. So with Skadi Alter providing one of the biggest healing, this is why it's very good that you pair um, her together. Okay, I'm gonna use the stage with Big Ugly to teach you the concept of perma stalling, a very unique idea which features Mudrock skill 3 and Spectre on skill 2. So, I'm gonna let Big Ugly walk a little bit closer to Spectre, and let's make Mudrock hold on to him. 
So you can see that I wedged him right in between both Spectre and Mudrock. So it's hurting quite a bit. But this is the unique ability of these two operators. So what I'm going to do is that I'll turn on Spectre's skill first, and then I will turn on Mudrock's skill. So what this does is that notice that the boss is currently attacking Spectre. But with the stun, and then Spectre actually being stunned herself, the baton is being passed back onto Mudrock. So now Mudrock is holding onto the boss, and then Spectre is not holding onto the boss anymore. So you can see how with this passing of the roll, I can repeat the cycle again. This perma stalling strategy was done a lot back in CC4 Let's See, where we had to do this onto the golems. So you can rinse and repeat again. You just turn on Spectre Scale because it's a perfect, beautiful 15 seconds. And then afterwards, by turning on Mudrock Scale, since her skill lasts for 10 seconds, and then after she stuns the enemy for 5 seconds again, you'll be holding on to the Big Ugly if, let's say, he had a much higher health uh, and defense in order to cause this permanent strategy to appear. So, interesting idea to learn with these two operators. Final closing advice for Mud Rock. So, what mastery should you work on first as soon as you have e to your Mud Rock? So, do I expect you to entry a skill straight away? Not exactly. Once you have her at Elite 2, first off is to M1 her skill 2. Reason is that you want to drop the SP requirement from 5 to 4. So, when that happens, the skill will be a lot more spammable. In terms of going from M1 to M3, it's not that much of a need because all you're increasing is the damage as well as the max HP increase from 5% to 6%, which is quite a small amount as compared to a talent which recovers 20% whenever a shield is broken. And the stun time increase is also not that significant. So M1 for skill 2 is actually more than enough. Then after you've worked on skill 2, depending on the number of boss killers or elite mob killers that you have, if you want a strong ability of like how you saw just now, the Sarkia's Grudge Bearers getting smacked, the Lancers, or even so many other mobs in the game, like the boss of Big Ugly, you can then work on skill 3. Skill 3 is not a skill where I'll say go halfway. If you really want it, go all the way, and then only after you've entered your skill 3, do you work on skill 2. You can ignore skill 3 M3 if you're a lazy player that doesn't like clicking on manual skills and you only want auto skills. Then if that's the case, then it's fine. I shall then say go ahead and skill 2 M3 it. Then of course, please do not build skill 1 because you barely use that. So that's all the advice that I have for Mud Rock and hopefully you've gotten her in your account or if not, she'll appear in your account one fine day. With that, thanks for watching this video and I'll see you real soon. Bye bye.